Chapter 1, Section 1, Problem 7. In this problem, we're given a graph. And so let's draw this out. The graph is like this. And we have the origin in the middle here. And each of these units is one. Here's the x-axis, and here's the y-axis. OK. So we're asked to find the domain and the range of this function. So before we do that, let's first clarify what we mean by that little open circle on that bottom portion of the graph, which is marked in red. That circle means that that point is actually not part of the graph. Okay? If it was part of the graph, there would be a closed circle there. So looking at the y equals negative 2 portion, so this is, or rather, x equals negative 2. Along that line, there's actually only one point in the graph that goes through that line, and it's the closed circle on the bigger piece of the graph. The open circle denotes that that point is actually not part of the graph. Now, why is this important? Well, recall the vertical line test says that if you have some sort of picture where if you drew a vertical line, it went through the picture at two different points, then what you have is not the graph of a function. So clearly, looking at this graph, everywhere seems to be OK except for the x equals negative 2 vertical line, right? There, it seems like there may be a chance that that vertical line here, let's emphasize it, it seems like there might be a chance that that vertical line could cross our red graph at two different points. It certainly looks like it. But that open circle that we have where the bottom part says no that point is not part of the graph, so it doesn't count, which means the vertical line test does not fail, and therefore what we have is indeed a function. So then the next question is, now that we do have a function, what is its domain? The domain is basically all of the x values that are part of this graph. Well, if you look at this graph, what does it range from in terms of its x values? Well, the lowest the x value ever gets is negative 3, right? And then over here, it gets to positive 2. 
and that's it. After positive 2, there's no more of the graph, and below negative 3, there's no more. So we can say that the domain is from negative 3 to 2, including both negative 3 and 2. We use square brackets for that. Now, the reason we include everything between negative 3 and 2 is if you look at the graph again, it's clear that there's no holes in the middle. So it is indeed correct to say that the domain is the entire interval from negative 3 to 2. Now, what about the range? The range is all of the y values that get hit by this graph. So looking at this picture again, well, it's clear that this lower piece has a range from what? Negative 3 to negative 2. So that's going to be part of the range. It's not going to be everything, but part of it is going to be from negative 3 to negative 2. But we have to be careful in terms of do we include negative 3 or negative 2. So here there's a closed circle in the beginning of that little piece of the graph. What does that mean? Well, that means the range includes negative 3. But unfortunately, on the other end of the graph, there's an open circle. And remember, when we have an open circle, that means that point does not count towards the graph. It's not part of the graph. So that means that this interval is from negative 3 to negative 2, but it does not actually include negative 2 itself. It includes things up to negative 2, but not negative 2 itself. So that's part of the range, but there's more, so we write a union sign. And what's the rest? Well, the rest of the piece goes from what? It goes from negative 1 all the way up, 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 all the way to positive 3. And if you look, there's nothing in between that there, where there's a hole. So that means the range for that piece definitely includes everything from negative 1 to 3. And here, if you look, is negative 1 part of the graph? Well, yes, because there's a closed circle there whose y-coordinate is negative 1. So that's good. And then positive 3. Well, positive 3, don't be tricked. It's not going to be that endpoint that's going to count towards the positive 3, right? Positive 3 is included because this red graph actually hits the y equals 3 line. If you look at this y equals 3 line, right here, it hits. So that means 3 is included. So we have to actually write positive 3 here, not negative 3. So it's negative 1 to positive 3, including positive 3. And there you go. That is the domain and the range of this function.